Hello everyone, this is Mr. Appel, and today we're going to learn about cylinders. Cylinders. So, uh, we already learned about prisms, uh, and cylinders are kind of like a prism, except that those bases, instead of being polygons, they're actually now circles. So you see here that those two bases are circles instead of, cylinder, instead of polygons. So the difference is, when you had a polygon, and you had, let's say, a triangle on the top, and on the bottom, and then you could connect those vertices, you could connect those vertices and you got rectangular faces. But now what happens on your cylinder is that when you connect sort of the edges of the circle, there's no vertices. So they all just sort of come straight down and you get just one surface instead of several faces. Um, and that surface is called the lateral surface. So a cylinder has two congruent circular bases, so they're circular bases. Um, they're still parallel to each other. Uh, and we usually talk about right cylinders, right? And just like with prisms, we talked about right prisms where the two are right on top of each other, so these formed right angles. Same thing here. So this shown, this one that's shown here, is a cylinder, uh, but it's not a right cylinder. A right cylinder would be what you think of, like a, a tube or something, where this is a right angle here. Um, and that's typically what we are going to deal with, is right cylinders, uh, but that is what a cylinder is. Um, some more vocabulary around cylinders. Um, the altitude, or the height, of a cylinder is the up and down distance, right? That's straight up and down from the, between the two, the distance between the two congruent circles. Um, the axis, this is something you probably haven't heard before, is the segment that connects the centers of the two circles. The centers of the two circles, that's this line here. Now in most cylinders we're going to deal with, the axis and the altitude are actually going to be the same thing. Because if it's a right cylinder, they'll be the same thing. Uh, but I'd just like to show you that vocab so that if you see it, uh, you'll, you'll know what we're talking about. Okay, but now let's look at what we're going to look at uh, at, at surface area. Um, the surface area. So surface area of the lateral area here, which is that kind of weird big space that goes all the way around the cylinder, uh, is a little different to kind of understand. And you may have experienced this before, but I, I found a little animation that I think might be helpful. Um, and here's what that looks like. So if we take that, that cylinder and sort of unwrap it, watch what happens. Okay, you see that that lateral face that lateral face is actually a rectangle. If you take a piece of paper and roll it up, you get a cylinder without the two circles on the top and bottom. Uh, so the lateral face is a rectangle. So when we're trying to find the lateral area, how do you find it? Well, it's just the area of this rectangle, even though that rectangle is hard to see when it's in the cylinder. Well, what are the dimensions of this rectangle? Well, the base of this rectangle, which you see is this red line, is actually just the circumference, the distance around that circle, or the perimeter of that circle. All right, so with prisms, the perimeter of the base times the height gave you the lateral area. And here, it's the same thing. The perimeter of the base just happens to be the circumference of the circle. And watch when I roll it back up, you'll see that it's, it's just the circumference of that circle gives you the width of that rectangle, and then the height of that rectangle is just the height of the cylinder. So the formula is really the same thing. It's really the same. It's the lateral area is the perimeter times the height. Same thing with the cylinder, perimeter times the height. Only difference is the perimeter here is the circumference of the circle, which is 2 pi r. So another way to write this formula is 2 pi r h. Okay, then the total area, let's explore the total area in just a second here. Uh, so the total area is the lateral area plus the area of the two bases. Well, the two bases are circles. How do you find the area of a circle? Pi r squared. So how do you find the area of the two circles? 2 pi r squared. So that's why our formula looks like this. It's the lateral area plus 2 pi r squared. But really, it's the same area. I'm sorry, the same formula for total area. It's the lateral area plus twice the area of the base. 
which is what this says right here. Again, it's just that the area of the base in this case is the circle. Okay, great. A little bit more now, let's look at volume. And again, it's the same concept. You remember in a prism, volume was just the area of the base. Remember that capital B means the area of the base. Um, so the area of the base times the height, same thing with a cylinder. The volume is the area of the base times the height. It's just that to find the area of the base, it's pi r squared because it's the area of that circular base. Um, and that's hopefully you can see the connections between a prism and a cylinder. They're very similar, but uh, different because of that circular nature of the bases. Okay, let's look at an example. So lateral area of this cylinder, we've got a radius of the base shown, the radius of six, and we've got the height of this cylinder. This is a right cylinder, which we're going to assume unless it says otherwise. And you see the right angle there tells us that. So we could also call that dotted line the axis. Not the most important thing in the world, but again, I like to share that with you. So the lateral area is just the area of that really sort of hidden rectangle, that unwrapped thing, which is just the perimeter of the base times the height. Well, perimeter of this base is 2 pi r, and r is 6 centimeters, so it's 2 pi times 6 centimeters times the height, which is 10 centimeters. And if we simplify all that, we get 2 times 6 is 12, times 10 is 120, so that's 120 pi centimeters squared. All right, centimeters, centimeters gives us centimeters squared. Okay. The total area, or the surface area, or the total surface area, you can call it whatever you like, is the lateral area plus twice the area of the two bases. Sorry, that's a little illegible there. The lateral area we already know is 120, whoops, 120 pi square centimeters plus twice the area of the base. Well, the area of the base is pi times six centimeters squared, pi r squared, because it's the area of the circle. And so if we simplify all that, we get 120 pi square centimeters plus order of operations, do the exponents first, six squared is 36, times two is 72, so we get 72 pi square centimeters. And then add those together to get 192 pi centimeters squared. And that is your total area. And then finally the volume. Volume, remember, area of the base times the height. Area of the base is pi r squared, so that's 36 pi centimeters squared is the area of the base. 6 squared is, the, excuse me, 36. And the height is 10 centimeters. And so we multiply those together and we get 360 pi centimeters cubed. So 360 pi cubic centimeters. And again, we're leaving everything in terms of pi. That's how you should write your answer. And that's about it for cylinders. Thanks for watching.